Imagine, if you will, stepping into a time machine, dialing back the years to the early 1970s. A time when the video game industry was still in its infancy. A time when the concept of playing games on a television was a far-off dream, a figment of the most ambitious of imaginations. This was a world before the advent of the internet, before mobile phones, and indeed before video games had become a ubiquitous part of our culture. This was the world in which Atari was born, a time of change, a time of innovation, and the beginning of an era that would forever change the face of entertainment. Our story begins with a man named Nolan Bushnell, a man obsessed with a game called Space War. Bushnell, a bright-eyed engineer, was smitten with the game during his days at the University of Utah. It was there that he first experienced the allure of the pixelated cosmos, a digital universe that captured his imagination. This fascination soon transformed into a vision, a vision of bringing the thrill of video games to the masses. But before he could realize this dream, Bushnell cut his teeth in the world of amusement park arcades. It was a vibrant, chaotic world of flashing lights and the jingle of coins, a place where joy was dispensed in the form of tickets and high scores. It was here that Bushnell learned the ropes of the entertainment business, a knowledge that would prove invaluable in the years to come. Bushnell wasn't alone in his venture. Standing beside him was Ted Dabney, a fellow engineer and a friend. Together, they embarked on a journey to create their first video game, a direct descendant of Space War, Computer Space. Despite its modest success, Computer Space was a testament to their commitment and a glimpse into the future of gaming. Soon, the duo decided to formalize their partnership. They set up Sizigi, a name as unique as their vision. But as fate would have it, another company already wore that moniker. So they needed a new identity, a name that embodied their spirit, and thus, Atari was chosen, named after a term from the game Go, symbolizing a strike against the opponent. Atari, a name that was about to etch itself into the annals of video gaming history a company that was to become a beacon for all future game developers, illuminating the path to a new era of entertainment. And with that, Atari was born, a company that would forever change the face of video gaming. In the early days of Atari, a game emerged that would revolutionize the gaming industry. It all began when Nolan Bushnell, the mastermind behind Atari, stumbled upon Magnavox's Odyssey's Table Tennis. This simple game sparked a brilliant idea in Bushnell's mind, leading to a pivotal moment in Atari's journey. Bushnell brought on board a young engineer named Al Alcorn, whose talent would prove instrumental in bringing Bushnell's idea to life. Together, they created a game that was simple in concept but addictive in its gameplay. They named it Pong. The game was an instant hit, surpassing everyone's expectations. It was not just a commercial success, it became a cultural phenomenon, sowing the seeds of the gaming revolution. People were entranced with this new form of entertainment, marking the dawn of a new era. And so, Pong became a household name marking Atari's first major success. But the road to success was not without its bumps. Just as Atari was soaring high on the wings of Pong's success, dark clouds began to gather. The first of these was a lawsuit from Magnavox. They claimed that Pong was a direct copy of the table tennis game on their Odyssey console. It was a David versus Goliath battle, with Atari being the young upstart against the established giant. The case was settled out of court, but it was a wake-up call for Atari, reminding them that the gaming industry was not just fun and games, but also a fiercely competitive business landscape. Meanwhile, in the heart of Atari, a storm was brewing. Ted Dabney, the co-founder of Atari, began to feel alienated by Nolan Bushnell. Bushnell was the face of Atari, the visionary driving its success, but Dabney was the technical genius behind the scenes, often overlooked. Dabney eventually left Atari, a significant blow to the company's technical prowess. His departure marked the end of the original Atari Dream Team and the beginning of a new era. Amidst these turbulent times, a young man named Steve Jobs entered the scene. He was introduced to Atari through a friend and soon started working on game designs. However, Jobs was a different breed. He thought differently, worked differently, and brought a whole new perspective to Atari. There were missed opportunities, of course. Jobs offered Bushnell a stake in a little project he was working on with Steve Wozniak a project that would later become Apple. Bushnell declined, a decision he would come to regret. These events marked a turning point in Atari's journey, setting the stage for a new chapter in its history. In the mid to late 70s, Atari faced a series of challenges that would lead to its downfall. The first blow came with the acquisition by Warner Communications, a corporate giant that didn't quite understand the essence of Atari. This acquisition led to the development of the Atari 2600, a gaming console that promised to revolutionize the industry. However, beneath the surface, tensions were brewing. 
cultural and management clashes between the innovative minds at Atari and the corporate executives at Warner began to erode the company's foundations. The arrival of Ray Kasser, a traditional businessman with little knowledge of the gaming industry, further amplified these issues. Kasser's management style was a stark contrast to the creative and free-spirited culture that had made Atari a success. This change in leadership led to the departure of top talents, many of whom were responsible for the company's early triumphs. Despite these setbacks, the Atari 2600 saw massive success, and the company's games rose in popularity. However, this success was not without its pitfalls. The release of Pac-Man, while initially anticipated with excitement, ended up being a disappointment due to its rushed and flawed development. It was Atari's biggest seller, but bearing little resemblance to the original game, coupled with a flood of low-quality games, it diluted the brand value of Atari. In parallel, the founding of Activision and other third-party game developers introduced stiff competition in the market. These developers, unburdened by corporate bureaucracy, were able to innovate and produce high-quality games, further eclipsing Atari's presence. These events marked the beginning of the end for Atari, a company that had once stood at the pinnacle of the gaming industry. In the aftermath of Atari's downfall, the company left behind an indelible legacy. A brand once synonymous with cutting-edge entertainment and innovation was now a cautionary tale, a stark reminder of the havoc mismanagement can wreak. Warner Communications, the media conglomerate that acquired Atari, was a behemoth in the entertainment industry but struggled to navigate the intricacies of the gaming world. The clash of corporate cultures, the pressure to churn out games quickly, and the lack of understanding of the gaming ecosystem played significant roles in Atari's downfall. Over the years, Atari's identity has shifted considerably. From its humble beginnings as a trailblazing startup, to its time as a gaming industry titan, and finally to its current iteration as a brand primarily focused on licensing and nostalgia, Atari has undergone quite the transformation. It's tempting to speculate on what could have been had Nolan Bushnell, Atari's original founder, retained ownership. Would Atari have maintained its innovative edge? Could it have weathered the storm of the video game crash of the early 80s? We can only guess. What we do know is that Bushnell's entrepreneurial spirit and passion for gaming laid the foundation for what Atari would become. Fast forward to today and you'll see that Atari has moved beyond its past. It's currently dabbling in a variety of ventures, from developing a new console, the Atari 2600 Plus, to exploring the worlds of blockchain and hotel chains. The company may not hold the same position of dominance it once did, but it's clear that the spirit of innovation that sparked Atari's genesis still burns brightly. Despite its decline, Atari's legacy lives on, a testament to its pioneering role in the video game industry. See it through 